Karo. Good to have both of you. Welcome to Morning Live. Hey, right. yeah, happy okay. to be here. Thank you. Let's well, talk about the movie and how it came about. Karen, let's, let's find out from you. What made you do it? Okay, well, um, it's, it's, it was a very long journey. It started in uh, 2008 when um, actually the SABC um, uh, decided to do a series called The Icons. It was a series of 10 films commissioned on the heroes of, of South Africa. Um, and we were commissioned to do this, the one specifically on Robert Mangalisa Sobukwe. Um, and uh, yeah, so we started, we started then and we went into production and it was a huge uh, journey because as Mickey will tell you, we had very little archive. So we mm -hmm. spent a good year just trying to find archive at University, there's a, a, a Sabukwe archive there. We went to UWC, uh, Forte, many, many places across the country. Um, and that's how it started. Yeah. Well, I mean, talk to us a little bit more about Robert Sabukwe and what your findings were, because, like you say, not an easy topic to do. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, it, I, I think that the, the movie, as uh, Carol in the Making, was a, was a journey, as Carolyn uh, was uh, said, because, yes, I, I knew about Robert Sabukwe from, you know, struggle days and so on, but I didn't know what I know now. I probably only knew 10% of what I know now. So uh, we read the book. There's a book by Benjamin Pogrand. Um, you know, so we, we read that. But that really was, was about the only thing that was around except newspaper articles and things like that. So, um, you, you know, we discovered a, a life of firsts. Many things that, you know, I mean, you know, people throw the name non-racial around, you know, randomly. Well, you know, when he first talked about non-racialism, people thought he was crazy. Yeah. You know, he used that word non-racial and they said, you know, come on, a word like that doesn't exist. He said, well, if it doesn't exist, then we create it. Mm. Um, you know, he was the first person to say there's only one race and it's the human race. Yeah. Uh, at the time when everybody was talking about multiracialism, you know, for him and, and the PAC, um, you couldn't talk about race in a plural sense because if you do that, then you might as well be racist as mm -hmm. well. Um, many first, for instance, I mean, he was prisoner number one on Robben Island. He was in prison for six years on his own on Robben Island. Um, and I mean, you know, in places like Standerton where he, he taught after Fort Hare, um, he, um, he organized the very first political meeting ever. Um, so, I mean, it was a whole lot of things that, that he did, and he was even incredibly involved in some of the major turning points of the South African struggle, uh, mm -hmm. but most people, people don't know it. So when you watch the movie, you discover a, a lot of, of, of some of these things. Relate Robert Sabukwe to Sharpeville Massacre. Well, that... In a sense, that day, March 21, which uh, today we're remembering, is the day when um, uh, he came up with the notion that if the passbook is this thing that for black people uh, is a scourge, if this is the thing that is forced on you to give you an identity, if it's the thing that wherever you go, if you do not produce it, you go to jail, irrespective of who you are, if it's the thing that really dehumanizes you and turns you into a slave, mm. and that you must produce on demand when they ask for it, well, we're gonna leave it at home. Yeah. Yeah. And we're gonna go up to the police and we're gonna say, I don't have it, yeah. take me, arrest me. Yeah. And if the whole country does that, you can cripple the system. Absolutely. And in fact, that's what actually happens. Yeah. Um, and they would not arrest them because I think they realized that, you know, so, in, but there were many things that kind of led up to, 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 to that day. But, you know, I would say, um, you know, up until that time, the PAC was maybe nine, ten months old. So people didn't take it seriously. They never thought to do anything. But I think they hadn't read the, the feeling of, of the majority of people that were around, that they were actually tired. Yeah, and yeah. so, yeah. That's. Carolyn, I mean, we, we talk about the fact that in the beginning it was quite difficult to research this and find information, but at the end of it, there was about 300 hours worth of footage that you put together. I mean, it must have been a very difficult task to try and bring it down and make a movie out of all of this, this, this work that you'd, that you'd put together. Yeah, I think uh, um, the, also the hard, one of the hardest things was actually trying to find uh, 
uh, Robert Sibokwe's voice, which we never found. I mean, that was a, a huge task. We tried all over the world to find archive, to find the actual voice. While well, we found writings of him, and we obviously found his speeches from Forte and Hilltown, and earlier days, he had made some powerful speeches. And we took those speeches and we recreated, dramatized those events, because there was no archive and there was no audio. And the critical thing was to find his voice, because he was such a powerful orator. So, I mean, the process of, of having all these hours and hours of interviews was uh, was conducted both locally and internationally and literally it did it took Mickey a good year I'd say to craft the initial cut that we could work with to put, to be able to create a narrative that could tell the story in a, in about an hour to 108 minutes it's a you know it's an epic it's a it's an epic um, uh, a story so um, it's told you know it, it, initially I think we had two or three hour cut and we had to eventually come down and come down. We had, to, we had to work a cut for broadcast, two-part series, so we had two times 52-minute episodes, and then we had a feature length, 108 minutes. So it was a, it was a journey, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, as Mickey said himself, he had, to, you know, he had to keep some people in, and he had to keep other people out. We had interviewed, unfortunately, we couldn't have everyone in, yeah, because yeah. we had to create a story at the end that would work in terms of uh, Sabukwe's key moments of his life, the critical beats. We looked at five beats, you know, when he was born, when he went to Forte, when he launched the PAC, the Sharpville, when he went to Robben Island, and then when he was b banished to Kimberley for the last, I don't know, seven, yeah, eight years of his life, life. Yeah. that he, uh, before he passed. Amazing. Yeah. Now, you showed, there was a screening last night in Soweto. I think there's another one this afternoon. What yeah. was it like? Uh, no, it was very it was responsive, definitely. And yes, we have another one at 2 p.m. Um, in, at the Soweto Theatre in Jablani. And yeah, we're looking forward to people coming through and it's for free. So, you know, people love things for free. Yeah. So we hope that they will come and, and share with us and connect with us. And, and it's, it's, it's so good day today. Yeah. Uh, this is, without him, this day would not have happened. His first turning, real turning point in the history of struggle in South Africa was March 21, 1960. I'm leaving the interview on that note because that's a powerful note to leave it. Mickey, thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you very much for being us. Congratulations on the movie. Well thank done you, on your you. awards as well. Uh, as you know, the South African Film and Television Awards took place last week and, uh, and this particular movie uh, getting quite a few awards for its work.